Hi guys, in today's video on NSM Overland, I'm gonna show you how to change the timing belt of your Subaru Forester. And actually not only the Forester, but all the single overhead cam EJ engine. So that goes for a lot of Subarus out there. It's actually pretty easy. You can do it by yourself. So bear with me, let's do that. Let's take care of this timing belt. For that, you'll need a 10, 12 and 14 mm socket and wrench, a torque wrench, a pin spanner, also called Subaru Crank Pulley Tool, and some coolant. First step, removing the radiator. For that, we want to drain the coolant. Go under the car and gradually loosen the two 10 mm screws that hold the plastic elbow of the large hose of the water pump. The radiator is off. You should now have enough space to work on your timing belt. Second step, remove the accessory belt. So to remove the accessory belt, start by removing the upper covers that protect these belts with three 10 mm screws. Then proceed with the alternator and power steering pump drive belt. So loosen the 12 mm bolt around which the alternator pivots. Loosen the 12 mm bolt that locks the tensioning system and loosen the long tensioner bolt. That way you can remove the belt. Now move on to the air conditioning compressor belt. So loosen the 12 mm nut located in the center of the pulley. Loosen the long 12 mm bolt until the belt is sufficiently slack. Unscrew the two 12 mm bolts that hold the tensioner and remove it and remove the belt. Done. Third part is removing the crank pulley. So here's how the crank pulley is mounted. It is slid, not forcefully, onto the end of the crankshaft, radially locked by a key and axially locked by a bolt. To remove it, you can use a specific pin spanner to block it from rotating. But you can also use this whole trick, using one of your old belts to lock the crank pulley in place by wrapping it on itself. That way it will lock the crank pulley in place and if you are lucky you will be able to unbolt the crank pulley. Note that it doesn't work every time and the pin spanner remains the best solution. When it's done let's take care of the timing belt cover. This plastic cover is held in place by 10 mm screws all around its perimeter. So first, remove the right part that only protect the camshaft pulley for cylinder 2 and 4. Then, remove the large part of the cover that protects the rest of the timing belt. You should now have the timing belt, the various idlers and the water pump in front of you. In my case, I do all of that because of a bad timing belt tensioner. I do have a dedicated video about this issue, but just check how the timing belt tensioner is moving and absolutely do not make it work. So at any time the timing belt can pop out because of this part. Before doing anything, you want to time the engine. There are several ways to time the engine before replacing the belt. Traditionally, before removing the belt, you need to align the pulley marks upward. This is the solution I went for. You can also make a mark with white out on each pulley and the belt. Then place the new belt next to the old one to reproduce the white out marks that will help position it on the pulleys. Once it's done, you can remove all the idlers and the timing belt. So no matter the method, we can now start the disassembly. Remove the idlers, starting with the one at the bottom left. Remove the guide above the crankshaft pulley, hold it by two 10mm screws. Remove the timing belt. 
You can also now remove the timing belt tensioner. For this one, be careful. Do not unscrew the bolt that holds the roller itself. You need to unscrew the bolt around which the entire tensioner system pivots. It's actually bolted into the engine block. Now, the water pump. Depending on its mileage, it may not be necessary to replace the water pump, but since you're right there, a quick check will tell you its condition. Check that there are no coolant leaks. If the pump squeaks when you turn it by hand, the seals may be wearing out. If there are hard spots when turning it by hand, the bearings may be wearing out. If there is play in the shaft, the bearings are completely worn and it's advisable to replace the pump. The pump is still connected to the engine by a bypass hose. Disconnect it by going back under the engine, then grab a 10mm wrench. Unscrew the 10mm bolts around the pump body that secure it to the engine block. Then you can remove the water pump. If you want to keep the thermostat, remember to test it in a pot with a kitchen thermometer. The trickiest part of installing the new water pump is to properly fit the new gasket. It's really thin, so make sure to not damage it in the process. Also, don't forget to install the L-shaped rubber gasket that should be included with the new water pump. The required torque for the 10mm bolts of the water pump is only 12 newton meter. Alright, so I got pretty much everything removed. Here is the old belt tensioner, as you can see it's completely cooked. Uh, if we check some idler, um, the bearing wasn't that great, even though the old belt was pretty, pretty cool. So, just got the water pump out, the new one is there, we got some genuine Subaru parts, thermostat, uh, gasket, and all the gaskets for the water pump. Everything needs a good clean in there, and I will be able to put everything back on. Now, the reassembly. It's time to put everything back together with the new parts. So you can install the new idlers, but not the bottom left one yet, at 39 newton meters. Install the new timing belt tensioner, but do not remove the pin yet at 25 newton meter. Make sure to not over torque this one. Place the new timing belt and make sure the pulleys are Thank still you. aligned. Thank And the new belt is in, the timing seems correct, looks good so far. Let's install the last piece of the timing belt kit. Now you can install the bottom left idlers and tighten it at 39 newton meter. Okay, so now everything is back on. Everything is probably time. We're gonna do, you know, a few turn of the engine to see if there is no issues, if there is any nothing block uh, the engine, and then we'll be able to put that in tension by removing uh, the little thing on the new belt tensioner. Comparison, you can now see that this one 
is doing its job. It's nice and sturdy. While the other one was moving a lot this morning. You can reinstall the guide above the crankshaft pulley and use a 1mm shim to leave a gap between the guide and the belt. Bolt it at 10 newton length. After putting back the plastic cover, you can reinstall the crank pulley and tighten it at 127 newton meter. You can now reassemble everything else. Just follow the disassemble steps, but the other way. A little tip for the accessory belt to get the right tension on the longest side, you should be able to twist the belt a quarter turn by hand. Okay, uh, I think everything's ready to, to test. Let's do that moment of truth. Need the keys. It's done. It was easy. I told you, and you just saved yourself three hundred to six hundred dollars. That's a good deal. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to your channel. It always helps. You can also check my Instagram account for awesome pictures of my foresters. Uh, my website as well for nice articles about overlanding, Subarus, and stuff. And if you want to support me, maybe in an other way, I'll also have a Patreon page. So thank you guys for watching and see you soon for an other awesome DIY video. Stay tuned.